G'day guys and welcome to me lab and to our second lesson in our Godot 4 platformer tutorial series, Super Bogan Brothers. Let's have a look at what we are getting up to in this lesson. Today we are going to create our player scene, we're going to give them uh, animations, a script, movement and also a follow. But why so our player can start to explore around the game as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. You're going to need to understand and apply how to create scenes and nodes. So what we did last week, we're going to do it again just to reinforce that learning for you this week. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to move your animated sprite character around your tile map and the camera will follow. Alright let's jump into Godot and get started making our player character scene. So we're going to start this off in very similar fashion to we did last lesson. We're going to create a new scene. So instead of clicking straight away on the 2D node here because we had that sort of um, original scene already open last time we need to make a new one or open a new one. So the way we do that is we come up into the top of our Godot canvas and we click on the little plus symbol next to our um, scene that we made last time and then it gives us back that node menu. Now for our scene that was our world we used a 2d node but we actually need to use something different for our player character we're going to use what's called a character body 2d so what we do there is we click on other node and it brings up this menu and then we do a search for it so we just start typing in what we want and then it sort of narrows it down so character body 2d is what we want that is going to be our root node for our player character it's also going to be the root node for our enemies and things like that too but let's focus on what we're doing here so like I said in the last lesson, we want to rename our root node because it helps us keep track of everything. So let's rename that to player and then let's save this scene, command S, control S. And because we called the root node player, it's going to call our scene that too, which is perfect. So we've now got world.scene and player.tscn as well. So here it is, here is our player scene. We've still got that background color going on here. We can work on that in a moment. Um, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. It's more just for our world scene and any subsequent scene. Um, it doesn't matter so much for our player character. All right, so we've created that. We need to do a lot more though. So let's add a child node. So with our player node selected, we click a little plus sign, brings up our options and we want an animated sprite 2D. So an animated sprite 2D is going to allow us to give our player character an actual sprite that is animated. Um, and there's one other thing we're going to need. So up here, this little warning sign is saying we don't have a collision shape. So let's do that as well. Click back on our root node um, player, click the plus and search for collision shape 2D. That then becomes a child node of our player. And then um, once we get our actual sprite in there, we'll add a shape to that as well. So let's now click on the animated sprite 2D. And then that gives us um, our menu here. We're over the side with our animation. So we're gonna click on animation in the um, inspector menu on that side. And then we're gonna see where it says sprite frames and it says empty. We're gonna click on that empty and click on new sprite frames and then click on it again like that. And it brings up our little menu down the bottom. So we need a sprite to use. So if you're doing this in class, the OneNote has the sprites in there. If you're doing this um, from home, you can get them either through uh, the GitHub or through itch.io. Uh, the links will be in the description. Um, for now, let's just get started with an idle animation. Um, so I'm just gonna drag in that uh, file that I told you about for the animations. There it is there, Baz of the Bogan. And I just drag it into our um, file menu like we did with our um, block and our brick last time. We just drag it in there. So now I've got Baz of the Bogan in there. We've got our idle. So I'm going to click on this little grid looking thing over here. And that lets me now pick which file we're going to get our sprite from. So click on Baz of the Bogan, click open, and we've got to set this to be right. So we've only got one vertical um, row and then we've got one two three four five six actually it looks like there's seven but we just have the seventh one empty so click to seven so that's that and then we need to select which frame we're going to use for our idle and we're just going to use the first one so we'll add that in there's our little guy i'm going to move him up so he's standing on the axis like that now what i'm going to do is click on our collision shape 2d and then over in our inspector menu, click on where it says empty and select a capsule. And then I'm going to drag that capsule just to, to be around our dude like that. So now we've got no warnings over here anymore. We've got our player. He's got an animated sprite 2D with a sprite that's um, in there. And we've got a collision shape and we've given it the collision shape. So let's save that. We've now got our world scene and our player scene. If we now actually go back to our world scene um, and drag our player scene in, which by which I mean we're going to find our player scene here in our file menu 
um, which is there just above my head and then I'm going to click it and just drag it over here and drop it into the map all right so that is how we create um, or make our player a child node of our map up here you can see and in fact I'm going to make it a child of the tile map so just by clicking on the player and dragging it to the tile map, it then moves it from being a child node of the world to being a child node of the tile map. Being a child node of the tile map just helps with wire sorting and things like that. So I'm going to leave our player there like that for the moment. And then let's actually play our game. Let's test it. So I'm going to click on the big play button. I'm going to say yes, select current because I want the world scene to be the main scene that we open with. And then let's have a look. All right, there's our dude. He's just floating there exactly where I dropped him. There's no such thing as gravity or anything like that that's been enabled. We haven't given him any controls, so we can't move or anything yet, but we can see our world. We can see our dude in it. And everything looks pretty well proportioned, so I'm happy with that. Let's close this one down. And our next step is gonna to be to create a script to give our player um, movement and things like that. All right, so to create a script, in particular to create a script that is attached to our player, we need to follow a few quick steps. So with our player scene selected, so clicking back over to our player scene at the top there, click on our root node, player, and then you'll see there's this little um, looking like a scroll sort of icon with a green plus. We're gonna click on that to add a script to that node that we have selected. So it straight away comes up going, all right, so that node is a character body 2D. So we wanna inherit those characteristics um, and we want the path to be player.gd, which is fine. So .gd is our script extension for GD script, I guess. Um, and that's all fine. All of that matches. So let's click create and that creates a script that already has a whole bunch of code in it for us um, and this code is almost great like we're going to use a lot of it but we do need to make some changes just to show you what I mean let's save that and give it a test so we come up and we click on the play button again now we actually have some movement we can go back and forth um, and we can jump so these particular um, actions are already programmed in that sample script, which is super helpful. It also has gravity because you notice that we had made our player um, slightly above the, the floor there and he fell down and stayed on the floor. So remember in the first episode, we went, went through and made all those, all those two collision shapes for our block and for our brick. So those collision shapes are why our player is landing on top and staying there and not falling through because our player has a collision shape and the bricks have a collision shape. So when those two collision shapes touch, they just stop. They can't go through each other. So that's why our player is now on the floor um, and we can move left and right, but we don't change animations. We can jump, but we don't change animations, right? So before the end of this lesson, we're gonna fix those things up. We're gonna add some animations. So let's um, close that one down. And what we're gonna do now is go through and start editing our script. All right, let's edit our script, right? So we've, we've, we've created a script that has a whole bunch of stuff in there already. And most of it's actually really, really useful. So we're just gonna do some editing around the edges. And the first thing I think we need to do is add in a new variable that will help us track whether we are jumping or not. We don't wanna be able to do double jumps and we wanna know like when we can play the jumping animation. So we need to be able to tell our game when jumping is taking place. We're gonna do that with this is jumping variable. We're gonna set it to false at the start. Um, I'm sure that makes sense. We don't wanna be jumping when we first enter the game. The next thing I wanna do is, well, we wanna be able to access our animated sprite 2D to know which animation to play when and, and that sort of stuff. So this is giving us access to that. So on ready variable, animated sprite 2D equals animated sprite 2D. Just add that one in as well. The next thing we need to do though is add a little bit of logic so that our physics process is tracking that jumping. So we're gonna say if we're not on floor and um, you know velocity is gravity times delta, that, um, do that. But otherwise we set our jumping to false. Next thing down here, we wanna set it to true. So this is where we actually hit the space bar and it says, all right, if we're on the floor when the space bar is hit, set our velocity y to our jump velocity, which was up here, which is negative 400. So negative 400 is because in Godot's game engine and most game engines, I think, um, your y plane, which is that up and down one, um, negative goes up and positive goes down, which is different to a lot of maths that we do. So it's important to understand for whatever reason, I'm sure it's logical, I just don't know the answer, in our game engines, the Y axis is negative upwards and positive downwards. So if we want to jump, we need an actual negative velocity. So it goes upwards on that Y axis. So that's why our jump velocity is set to negative 400. Um, and we want to set it 
to true when we're on the ground and we hit the spacebar key we want to change it to true um, and then of course when it lands again we want to change it to false so that's what that bit of logic there is doing it's just saying if we hit the spacebar key change to, um, set it to jump when we touch the ground again set it to false all right let's keep going down so the next thing we need to do is um, we're going to create a function called update animation um, and we need to be able to call that in our physics process so that's what's going on here just like we call this move and slide we also need to call this new function we're going to make that is called update animation and the code for that is here so we're going to create this function update animation and it depends on the direction right so we've got here direction to call in there so we've got that here as well if is jumping animated sprite 2d play jump so when we read it it should make sense logically right so in this function first thing we're going to do is see if that is jumping variable is true or false if it is true so if is jumping then we want to play the jump animation um, otherwise else if we want to play our animated sprite 2d run but we want to check which direction we're facing so is it greater than or less than zero if it is less than zero we want to flip horizontally so our player is facing to the right if it's more than zero we want to stay fa sorry facing to the left if it's more than zero we want to stay facing to the right so that's what we're doing here we're asking which um, whether the zero is positive or negative if it's negative, we want our sprite to flip horizontally so it's facing to the left, otherwise face to the right. And then we want to play our run animation if we're moving, if we're staying still, just our idle animation. And that's our entire script. So let's actually save that now. There's one more thing I want to do in our script though. And it's just a personal preference and it really is up to you. But here we're using UI accept. And UI accept in Godot 4 is automatically mapped to our spacebar key. Now, I prefer our jump to be our up arrow. That's just me. You don't have to change this if you don't want to, but I prefer it that way. So I'm going to change the word accept to be up. And the reason I can do that is because the UI up um, function is already mapped. That key is already mapped in Godot 4. We don't need to do it ourselves. So the up arrow now is going to be used for our jumping. And I'm going to save that. And let's test the game. So make sure you've saved it. Click on that play again. And there is our guy. I can now move back and forth. I can uh, not jump or anything like that yet though, because we haven't actually made, well, I mean, I can jump up and down, but we don't have any of the, um, the animations yet, right? All we did was made that one idle animation. So whilst we've now given ourselves all the, uh, the physics properties and things that we wanted to, we still need to tweak those animations. So let's close this one here and let's get into our animation so to do that we click back on our animated sprite 2d and then down the bottom here so at the moment we've got idle but there were two more that we wanted one called run and one called jump so we're going to add two new um, animations here by clicking on the the document with the green plus and then we're going to click on them and rename them one to jump and one to run all right, and then just like before, we need to access that Bogan sprite strip. So we come over to the little grid, click on that, click on Baz of the Bogan. We reset to one vertical and seven horizontal. And then this was our run. So that's gonna be um, basically these guys here, one, two, and, or zero, one, and two, add those three frames. Um, and we can speed this up to say nine a second. So it's playing three times a second. Um, and auto loop, that's fine. And our jump one, we click on jump, we click on the grid, we click on Baz of the Bogan, we change that to one, we change that to seven, and then we click on this one here. That is our jump animation. So there's that one there. Now, if we go and save it, we go back into our world. Let's have a look at our 2D. Zoom in a bit. Um, let's just lift our player up. So the first thing he's gonna do is fall to the floor. All right, now let's test it again. This should be our final test and then we'll do our must, may, might and all that and you guys can get stuck in. So play, there's our dude. All right, the idle animation is playing at the moment. If I go this way, he runs that way. If I go this way, he runs that way. If I jump, uh, he changes to the jump animation, right? So there we go. We have managed to, in, I don't know, 15 minutes, get our player character in here. I've managed to get him stuck fully animated with a custom script um, and a custom up button. There is one more thing before we do our must main might, and that is I wanna add a camera to follow our player. It's not gonna to matter too much at the moment, but it will in the future. So um, with our player selected in our uh, world scene, 
So not the player scene, the world scene. Click on the plus and then search for a camera 2D. And that gives you a little camera 2D there. And we can then control um, how far the camera can go. So I'm gonna make our left and top to be zero because that's um, basically where I've, I've made this to start. Um, and we can zoom in on our bottom of it as well. And we can set like our um, bottom one to be like that, like 650, like that. Um, and our right, well, how far have I made this go for now? We, I'm gonna leave the right actually, cause we're gonna expand that later on. So saving what we've made, let's do one final test. Um, and let's see if our camera follows. I don't think it needs to actually, cause the whole thing fits on the screen. It will become important. There we go, you can see it following there. So now we've got our character, we've got our character animated, we've given our character um, a script so it can move around, and we've given it a camera to follow it around. So that's everything that we're looking to do today. I'll explain it all again in our must main might, so let's go and have a look at that. So what you must do in this lesson to keep up, you need to set up your character uh, scene, script, animations, etc., as well as the follow camera. You may like to explore some of the variables we haven't touched. So what about that jumping speed and the running speed and all that sort of stuff? Play around and see how they affect it. You'll notice as you change that negative jump to maybe a lower number, it'll jump not quite as high. You know, So play around with that and learn. Um, you might want to read the documentation about Character Body 2D and see what you can learn about it because that is going to tell you everything about our um, root node for our our player and also enemies and things. So you should have created your player scene, script, animations and camera so that you're ready to follow along with our next lesson which is creating our enemies. So that is what we are getting up to in lesson three. I hope to see you back for that one and the quote I would like to leave you with this week is from uh, Bertrand Russell, one of the uh, early 20th century's great thinkers, and Bertrand Russell once said, time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.